One of the obvious examples of stigmatization and CAD can even be found on the front page of uh, the, one of the little journals in German Spiegel, uh, as you see here on this picture, coronavirus made in China. And you may also know and that uh, um, WHO organization prohibited usage of origin related names for variants of COVID-19 because of possible stigmatization of the carriers of the virus. Now, um, notwithstanding the uh, existing media reports, we still lack reliable empirical and above all representative evidence regarding the extent of discrimination related to COVID pandemic among various ethnic minorities. I don't want to disregard the recent project by Detsim, which is really a big contribution, but still, even in that project, we cannot compare the discrimination against Asian minorities to possible instances of discrimination against other minorities. So the first objective of this paper is descriptive one. To, to answer the question, is there an increase in CAT reporting by Asian as well as other minorities in Germany? And there are good reasons to also assume that other majority, minorities sorry, might be targeted. The second aim is more analytical. We pursue the question, is potential discrimination against Asian and possibly other minorities related to the threat that COVID-19 poses to individual health? because there is good reason to believe that this discrimination might indeed be some sort of rational if COVID poses particular strong threat. Now, um, the, uh, we will focus in our study not on CAT, not on the behavior, but on self-reported CAT. So people will be asked whether they feel increase in COVID-associated discrimination. So we need to understand um, what actually self-reported CAT captures. On the one hand, self-reported discrimination is likely to reveal actual instances of discrimination. On the other hand, uh, the literature suggests that perceived discrimination is also a subjective evaluation of, of an ambiguous situation and might be related to individuals attributing negative experiences to discrimination. So let us remember that could be these two parts. Now, assuming that reports of discrimination are in fact accurate, accurate and reflect actual instances of discrimination, we might ask ourselves why in fact ethnic minorities should be particularly prone to experience discrimination during the COVID pandemic. One possible explanation for discrimination is intergroup bias and the differentiation between in and out groups. Um, and particularly the fact that uh, attributes of in and out groups are evaluated differently. According to Murta's idea of moral alchemy, out groups are more likely to be blamed for the same characteristic and the same behaviors than in groups. As a consequence, minorities in Germany which are obvious and uh, an obvious outgroup can be expected to report more instances of discrimination during the pandemic compared to the majority population. There are several reasons to expect that the effect could be heterogeneous. And this heterogeneity could be especially to disadvantage of Asian min minorities. And one of the additional, and I want to stress additional mechanisms could be attribution. In reference to the Thomas theorem, Merton also postulates the following. Public definitions of situation become an integral part of the situation and thus affect subsequent developments. We know that the genesis of the COVID pandemic in China, the blame put by some world leaders and the media on the Chinese government for not containing the disease and their blameworthiness of social media against Asians worldwide in light of the pandemic might lead Asians also in Germany to attribute any negative situation they have experienced in the start of the pandemic to COVID associated discrimination. I want to stress here, I don't negate that there is actual discrimination, but my argument here that, that here might be also additional component of attribution, particularly happening among Asian minorities. 
To address further potential heterogeneity of outgroup discrimination, we refer to the integrated or intergroup threat theory or ITT. Its major advantage is applicability to both actual and perceived threats. The threat of COVID is ob ob obviously a real threat. I mean, the threat of disease here, of global importance, likely to intensify prejudice against outgroups that are believed, this is my stress here, to be particularly associated with the spread of virus. Not necessarily, but just belief or perception is enough. Um, and this might happen because some of the groups might originate in countries with high COVID incidence rates. The single members of the group do not have to be carriers of the virus. Obviously, some of them might be, but uh, many of them, the majority of them are not. But the fact that the group perceives the outgroup as more likely to transmit the virus might intensify prejudice a bit against this group. Therefore, we expect that ethnic minorities who are believed to pose a higher COVID transmission threat experience and hence report higher levels of CAT. Now, the threat might also, and I mean, again, perceived and actual, might also occur in, in areas, in residential areas with high incidence rates. Obviously, in the areas with high incidence rates, people are more cautious, they're more likely to distance themselves from others and discriminate against others. And given to, taken into account that outgroups are more likely to be discriminated, we might uh, say that outgroups and particularly ethnic minorities that are likely to be associated with spread of virus could or should report higher levels of CAT particularly in the areas of high incidence. So this is our kind of logic of our theoretical idea coming to the final kind of argument that we want to test that the outgroup prejudice should be stronger in areas with higher COVID incidence for the groups that are more likely to be associated with the virus, okay? Now let us remind ourselves how the situation looked like in the first half of the 2020. We have had a lot of COVID running, maybe we forgot, but I think I need to bring you back because our survey was carried out in uh, between April and summer 2020, but most of the cases, 80% uh, to where were fielded in the area which is gray here on this graph. Now let us see how the, um, uh, COVID uh, developed in not only in Germany, which is, by the way, the green uh, solid line, but also in other countries or regions, which will be relevant for our study because the groups we will look uh, at stem from these um, countries. Now, um, China, first China or Asia, this is uh, orange line. In the early phase of the pandemic, individuals from Asia were con uh, con considered as likely carriers of virus not only in um, Asia, but also in Germany. Actually, the first uh, con confirmed case came from uh, straight from China. Um, however, in, in the long run, the case numbers remained rather low. And the, if you see the, the dynamics actually picked up somewhat, actually not due to China, but other Asian countries in the period of the survey. So there is some increase, but not substantial. During the field work, there are several groups which actually outstand. One of them is uh, Americas, uh, US, and, but also South, South America. And you see the, the number of cases were much higher than uh, the German. Um, and also there was a unfavorable dynamics. There was an increase in the COVID cases. Another country with substantial increase, or not country, the region, the former Soviet Union, which also was kind of prominent at that time with a steep increase in COVID cases. Not to forget Europe, uh, France, Spain, Italy, I think it was all, all very much in the headlines, but not in that period, somewhat earlier. You see this uh, gray line for other Europe. During the uh, field of uh, the period, uh, fielded period, it was uh, higher than Germany, but rather stable as uh, any other country. So we have to keep in mind there were countries with higher number of cases, but also with a steep increase in COVID. 
Now, um, data, I come to data. As uh, Christian already informed, this is uh, COVID, uh, seals for COVID data, which is data, a special survey carried out as add-on to our seals data. Uh, we have a representative sample of three and a half um, uh, thousand individuals. So remember the age 24, 26, so it's an age cohort. The key number, 80% of cases were fielded between April and June, which is relevant for us, as you will see. Uh, the key question uh, we asked in this survey is, since the beginning of the corona pandemic, do you feel increasingly discriminated against or treated unfairly due to your ethnic background? The number, the categories were yes, rather yes, rather no, no. And there was one more additional category. I feel never discriminated against. So we have kind of here two parts and I will tell you later how we deal with that. So these are the origin groups we will be looking at. So these are the groups I showed you earlier. I'm just, I leave it here. You can have a look, the groups, but you will see them on the slide. So I will not go into detail here. Now, uh, the method we will use is audit probit model with Heckman selection. Heckman selection is needed because we have this kind of split question. Some people mentioned that they never feel discriminated, so we have to treat them and they will be in our selection equation. In the selection equation, we, which is the kind of question discriminated or not ever, we have a set of control variables listed here. In the outcome equation, we have an order, ordered scale. No, rather no, rather yes or yes. So in, in this outcome equation, we actually can determine this increase in COVID-associated discrimination. I will you, show you two specifications. One just contrasting majority and minority groups. The other looking at specific immigrant origin. So as I told, is it rather an out group or that we have observed some heterogeneity? Both equations we control for average number of new COVID cases, which is so much known in Germany as incidence rate. And also we control for the uh, background, uh, racial background or attitudinal background in the area by including share of the second vote for the party IFD in the, on the district level. Okay, now to description. I think description is very, very telling. So this is our dependent variable. On the left side is the answer to the question, I never feel discriminated. On the right side, we have information about increase in COVID um, associated discrimination. Actually, look at the left, we will find what we normally find in our stratification studies. Um, there are some groups which rarely say they never feel discriminated. And these are actually uh, individuals of the Asian origin and those coming from Middle East and Africa. So it's not unknown, but you can see that there are some number of German majority individuals who also say that they sometimes feel discrimination, by the, but the numbers are much, much lower. Now, the relevant part for our study is the right part. So here we see the increase in actually COVID associated discrimination. And what we can see that um, on average, we observe a moderate increase of 10% of COVID associated discrimination if we take all, major, all, all minorities, yeah? So just compare these two bars, we have uh, much more people who report um, discrimin increase in this COVID associated discrimination among, among minorities than among majority. But, and this is the most interesting and important part, if we look at the Asian group, the increase in COVID associated discrimination is about 50%. And it is, uh, we are very uh, pleased to know that this is the same number we hear from the uh, project which is running at DEDSIM, increase of discrimination among Asian minorities about 50%. This is what we can show here as well. Now, let us put these numbers in context. So, um, sales for you is a, a longitudinal study, so we can have measures of discrimination also for earlier times of trend. Obviously not COVID associated discrimination, but other types of discrimination. Just to let you know, we measured a discrimination at age 14, 15. We asked whether students feel discriminated at school, which is a green. 
dot. Then at the age of 16, 17, we focused on perceived discrimination in shops, cafes, bars, public transportation, and by police. So you see all these dots here. This was wave three. And at the age 19, 20, we ask um, about discrimination at the entry to the labor market. Yeah. So all dots, all dots are here. And you can notice immediately in all origin groups, a large share of respondents has, responded, has, has reported discrimination since Corona pandemic. This is blue dot. So it's a first largest, the largest uh, for many groups. If not, it's the second most frequently mentioned uh, discrimination for some groups. And in fact, these two groups outstand. Actually for Asian and uh, Middle East and African students, the biggest gap uh, between mentioning COVID associated discrimination and school discrimination is all evident. For Asian minorities, we see that COVID as associated discrimination is something really outstanding because they are rarely much comparatively rarely discriminated in other areas. Okay, now we come to our uh, multivariate analysis. And uh, here I showed uh, the result of the first model, the model without interactions, just the model with all control variables that I mentioned earlier. And what we see here are main effects of minority status in specification one here on the upper part and for specific origin groups in specification two. Let us start with the upper part, specification one. So what we do here, we just contrast being minority and majority. And we have two um, uh, columns. The first shows us the coefficient from the selection equation. So equation which asks the question, ever discriminated or not? And the other is um, outcome equation, which shows us the coefficient for increase in discrimination. So ordered model. Now, what we see here, obviously minorities are more likely to report any discrimination and minorities are also more likely to report COVID associated discrimination. But if we look at the heterogeneous effects, and this is our specification too, now you see the groups, for the selection, selection equation, we do see a known story, yeah? Um, Middle East Africa, actually Turkey is also here, are more likely to be discriminated than majority or report discrimination, it's important, report discrimination than majority. People of Asian origins are also more likely to report. We see that individuals from the former Soviet Union are also more likely to report, but not to the same extent. We don't see that for other Europe, for Americas and for Central, Central and Eastern European country. Now, if you come to the outcome equation, we see that this penalty in COVID associated discrimination reports is largely driven by Asian minorities. Actually, we kind of look at uh, separate coefficients. The only group which outstands are Asian minorities. So they are the ones who contribute mostly to, um, to the reporting of discrimination. Now, so we see what we see here on average, the only group for which we see COVID associated discrimination are Asian minorities. Now we proceed and um, we investigate whether COVID associated discrimination against the out group is more pronounced if individuals, if respondents reside in administrative districts with higher infection rates, yeah? That is in which the risk of higher of being infected is comparably high and COVID poses re a realistic threat. So kind of an attempt to um, explain possible discrimination in some sort of rational way, yeah? To this end, we introduce an interaction term between the natural logarithm of seven day average of new cases in administrative district per, per 10,000 inhabitants. Uh, this is um, RKE definition of, um, of um, incidence rate and the detailed variable of country of origin. Yeah, so this is what we see here plotted. This interaction effect is um, statistically significant and positive for respondents from Asia, the former Soviet Union and Americas. 
yeah, so, and this is plotted here. This is the visualization of the interaction effect via predicted probabilities. And we take the affirmative answer to the question whether respondents perceive increased discrimination during the COVID pandemic at different levels of the natural logarithm of the average number of new cases. Actually, our um, uh, variable on the x-axis is centered to uh, ease the interpretation. On the uh, y-axis, we have the probability of outcome Yes. Now, uh, we, uh, to keep this, the picture concise, we present only a 95% confidence interval for one group, for Asian group, but uh, this, um, this effect is statistically significant on 5% level for uh, individuals um, from the former Soviet Union and at 10% level for individuals coming from America. So this, uh, the curves which are colored are in fact statistically significant, at least at 10% level. Um, yeah, we see that uh, the gray lines pertain to other groups and uh, these are um, non-significant coefficients or interaction terms. Now, uh, what we see here is actually, I think an, an interesting story that we, in countries of origin, in which um, actually the countries which are associated, if we look back at the first picture with RKE uh, um, numbers of cases, so in countries or areas uh, of world in which at that period of time there was um, increase in uh, number of cases are exactly the groups which appear here. So these are um, individuals from the former Soviet Union and Americas but also Asian individuals. For Asian individuals, if you remember, the increase was minor. And um, actually the, the whole story happened much earlier. So it's not the increase uh, during the field, um, fielded study. So um, yeah, um, Asians, Asian effect is very robust uh, in various specification, not only ordered logistic regression, but also OLS. We checked this, uh, checked this with different cut points and so on. Uh, the other two effects, America's effect is less robust, uh, as you see already in the 10% uh, significance rate, but still uh, the story is, uh, the, our interpretation is that the countries of origin um, for our other, for other two groups, apart from Asians, Americas, and FSU, experienced the highest increase in incidence rates during the fieldwork period. And uh, these countries, due to the unfavorable dynamics, were very much present in the media. Actually, ideally, it would be interesting to carry out some media analysis, but um, uh, that's, we didn't do that. But uh, for those who live in Germany, people would know how much present uh, COVID, uh, uh, COVID reporting is. And these were the countries that were in the media and used during the time. Therefore, discrimination against respondents originating from Americas and FSU may be related to the fact that these individuals were perceived to be more likely the transmitters of the coronavirus. However, and this is important, this is limited only to the areas in which COVID threat was particularly pronounced. So we observe discrimination tendencies only in the areas, on the regions where, where, uh, which are known for high incidence rate, not overall. Now, let us put the two findings together. So uh, first finding, which was the last one actually, reports of COVID association, associated discrimination are higher in administrative districts with unfavorable COVID pandemic dynamics, but only for those origin groups which are particularly associated with the spread of the virus. So we um, can conclude here that this is a clear support for the threat perspective. So uh, there is much more perceived threat in the areas of high incidence. And the threat people perceive is uh, forwarded towards uh, individuals from the group, which are again perceived as more likely to be carriers of the virus. Yeah, so this is kind of double threat in this situation. However, this is not, or not the only explanation for the Asian discrimination. 
Here we observe that, like in other countries, like in other study uh, by Detsim, individuals of Asian descent in Germany are more likely than any other group to report COVID-associated discrimination. We have seen the coefficient insignificant on average. Their coefficient is also present in relation to the area in, where, in which um, Asian uh, respondents reside. However, the Asian uh, coefficient, the coefficients pertaining to the Asian minorities cannot be uh, only explained by the realistic threat perspective. Yeah, there is a part, but there is a remaining effect. So we assume we conclude there could be or should be the rest, which is either avert discrimination and or also some sort of attribution. We cannot empirically distinguish that, but we can, can uh, <clears throat> indeed empirically assume or conclude that this is not only threat. Now, uh, let me uh, shortly mention limitations of this study. Um, obviously, um, although this is representative data, but this is data for solely one age cohort, more or less. Uh, we look only on young people. And although the, the overall sample size is rather large, if we look at individual groups, and that's why we had to collapse some groups, we have relatively low number of cases for some minority groups. So indeed, uh, we need further studies with larger, more um, broader samples to confirm this finding. Yeah, many thanks. I think I was very good in time. Thank you.